Welcome to Cooking with Tony Rigatoni, folks. Today, we're making clam chowder, baby. This is one of the oldest dishes in American history, and it has its roots in Boston because of the natural abundance of clams in New England, of course. How do you get clams if you don't have a boat? Not everybody's a Rockefeller, right? It started in the 1600s when fishing for clams was a means of survival, especially since clams are just right there in the sandbar at low tide. And for anyone living in Boston at that time, it was every man for themselves. Yes, men, because women didn't even vote until like the last year. And by 1641, one old ancient ruled, Free fishing and fowling as far as the tide doth ebb and flow. And that's exactly what they did. Fun fact, that law is still in effect today. Need some weekend fun? Go clam with the fam. If that's not your vibe, I totally get it. Nowadays, we got people called longshoremen or fishermen, and they do the fishing for you. I found a warm and cuddly one for you. And by warm and cuddly, I mean sharp like a razor's edge and cozy like a knife. Hey, I'm a longshoreman. Name's Hank. I work in the Boston Harbor. In Boston, we're wicked smart. We got Harvard and whatnot. <laughs> if you go there, they teach you how to park cars and bars. Park cars and bars. <laughs> we also got cops. Lots of cops. Ever seen on the waterfront? How about the departed? I'm the best friend you have on the face of this earth, and I'm gonna help you understand something, you punk. You're no cop. <laughs> He's my lead bird. He's always on top of the perch. You know, if another bump tries to come along and take his place, he really lets him have it. I don't like to play with birds as much as hemp. Makes me uncomfortable. Plus, I'm too busy eating chowder. Hey, Hank, have you? Not now, Tony. Today, we're making chowder. Clam chowder, to be exact. Manila clams. They smell just like my work. But you can make chowder out of anything. But today it's clams, all right? It starts with a good stock. Here we got some veg, frozen shrimp heads, and a bay leaf. Don't overthink these culinary terms. Stock. It's a whole bunch of flavored water, all right? Ask your local butcher for fish carcass if you don't have shrimp heads laying around like Tony. <laughs> Not everybody's that fancy. Hey, I'm a butcher. Get your fish carcass right here. Use the whole animal. Don't waste a bit. Fish carcass right here. Once my shrimp carcass has some color on it, we're gonna add some water. Give it a couple of minutes to simmer. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we were done. Corpse. No, we're just getting started, actually. Now we're gonna drop our vegetables into the pan. Here I'm using onions, carrots, celery, and leek top, and a little bit of potatoes, too. The tops are sweet when you cook them down, and they're good for you, so just stop freaking out, all right? This is what my final product looks like, so just stay with me here. We also don't like the Yankees. Last I heard, best chowder, it's at Fenway Park, baby. I'm not sure if he's right, but it doesn't matter, because art is subjective, and this is the culinary arts, all right? Not culinary engineering. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, a lot of people don't like seafood, but that's just because they weren't exposed to it as a kid. Or it was prepared horribly wrong. What a freaking tragedy. I've heard of worse things. Yeah, maybe like the plot of Waterworld. I fish for a living. You're telling me that the fish that I go and procure and bring back to the dock, you're telling me they're overcooking that fish? What's the point of it all? I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! Now that the veg has sweat out all of our water, we can start ladling in the stock. You know, it's not healthy to keep excluding me. <laughs> Can't you still keep me whilst caramelizing the vegetable properly? Not a chance. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I'm sorry, water, you gotta go. We wanna get to the sweetest part of our veg, and we can't do that without getting rid of you. That's why it's always important to cook your veg on high heat so we can get all that steam out of there and start the process of caramelization. I'll just be over here, crying into my cake. <laughs> Ever heard that song, Someone Left My Cake Out in the Rain? That's me, I'm the rain, and this is the cake. Ah! Best thing you've said all day, you flavorless waste of life. Oh, ever considered anger management classes? Oh yeah, Tony, that's the first thing on my mind, especially when we're scaling a wall of water 400 feet high and trying to make it through the Flemish cap. Ooh, eesh. Well, maybe it's a therapy session. I think one of his friends died in the cartoon version of uh, that film. Yes, humans can be friends with cartoons. 
I, I met a girl. She's a cashier. No way. That's awesome. Yeah. See? Now, you're going to add the clams, the white wine, some minced garlic, and clam juice. And you want to cover the, the clams with the lid. If you overcook the clams, I'll never forgive you. And I'll remember you. And so what if my best friend was a fish? And a boy who becomes his friend. And it's the story of their wonderful adventures together. You judge me, I'll judge you back. I'm fatty fat cream boy. At this time in the recipe, you want to add the cream and the butter. Because I am a finisher. I only show up when you're almost done. Are we still in the rehearsal? OK, yeah, just let me know when you're ready. So I'll take five. And if you want some umami flavor, adding some dashi really takes this dish to the next level. I'll be in the lounge after the show if you want to talk. I want my umami and a bowl of chowder. As always, my recipes can be found in the comments section of this video and on my website at www.tonyrigatoni.com. That's with three I's, not a Y. And this guy will see you next time on Cooking with Tony Rigatoni, baby. Season two, let's go.